Hi, I'm Ron Smith, NDSU Extension Horticulturist and Turfgrass Specialist. Today we're going to be talking about early spring lawn care in North Dakota and western Minnesota. Uh, the first thing I want to caution you about is to not get started too early. And uh, if you do, you're going to end up by opening up the turfgrass canopy to uh, some air, some light, and the weed seeds that are there being hidden by that turfgrass canopy are going to begin to germinate and get a head start on your, on your grass. And then you'll be fighting weeds uh, all summer long. So once the grass is starting to show some green color, you can then go ahead and do some of this work. What we have here that we're going to be demonstrating for you today are some basic uh, lawn care pieces of equipment. Of course, over here to the right is a, um, a mower, a rotary mower, that we are going to lower the height on. And what that'll do is it'll pick up the dead grass uh, from last year and uh, open up that canopy a little bit, but not too much, to allow for the, the crown of the grass plant to warm up and uh, begin some growing. Then the next thing we're going to do to help improve the soil condition here is to take the aerator. This will pull out plugs of soil about two to three inches long and open up that soil canopy for, uh, for better air aeration, air movement, water movement, and uh, uh, help to improve overall root growth of the turf grass. Then we're going to follow up with that with a uh, power rake. Now this is a, a machine that spins uh, a, some impellers, sharp impellers on, a, on an axle here at a very high speed and uh, that spreads the soil evenly over the turf grass surface acting as a top dressing which benefits the, uh, the grass plant itself. And then if you have any bare spots that you would need to do any seeding, overseeding on, you can go ahead and get your grass seed, a mixture of Kentucky blue, perennial rye, and fine fescue, sprinkle it on the bare spots, drag it in with a, uh, the back of a broom rake, let the rain come or water it yourself and you've got yourself a renovated lawn. What we have here now is a, uh, is a mower that we used last year at the standard mowing height, which is about two and a half to three inches in height. That's a good height to maintain your lawn at all summer long. Um, and then for this particular purpose, we're going to drop the mowing height down to roughly about an inch. And so you can see the designation here that we have on this particular model of mower. It's a A, B, C, D, E, F, and G way, way up here would be very high. That'd be about a four inch mowing height. So we're going to drop it down to roughly B and see how it goes. That should bring us down to about an inch mowing height. If we drop it too low, we take the chance of having a scalping effect, which uh, as uh, if that happens, we are going to be damaging the crown of the grass plant. It's going to slow it down as far as regrowth goes, and it gives those weed seeds that are ever present in our turf grass canopy a chance to go ahead and get a jump start on the grass. You should have changed your oil last fall before putting it away for the winter. If you uh, didn't, you should do it now before you start uh, doing any mowing this spring. And uh, in most cases, there's, the mowers today have a little bit different starting procedure than they used to have. Remember the old choke that you had to push over to get it started? Not anymore. Now they have these little bulbs that you have to push down here. And they say push them in slowly all the way three to four times. All right. And you don't, most of them have a, uh, a governor on them, so you don't have to worry about any speed. And a lot of them have battery starts, but we don't have a battery start. So I'm the battery here for this particular mower and give it a pull or two. There we go. As you may have noticed, uh, we have a, a bag on this uh, mower and it's a good idea when you do this type of mowing, scalp mowing at this time of year, it's a good idea to pick up those clippings because you don't want to be adding any more organic matter uh, leaf uh, litter back onto the lawn than is necessary at this time. Through the rest of the year, you don't need to bag your clippings. Uh, most mowers nowadays have a mulching blade, so the, the uh, clippings are uh, cut into little confetti-sized pieces and they're blown right back into the turf canopy and actually are returning some of the nutrients uh, to the lawn, so it cuts down on at least one fertilization a year. So this is the only time that you'd ever want to go ahead and collect the clippings, it would, uh, would be at this time of year, or if you should happen to be away on vacation and the kid that you hired to go ahead and cut your lawn while you were away didn't do it, and come back and your, your grass is almost knee high, then you'd want to go ahead and collect them at that time. After we get done with our scalp mowing, we want to go ahead and, and uh, um, get into uh, sharpening our blade after that because we've gotten it a little bit lower than we like to and um, it's going to dull the blade and you don't want to mow your lawn all summer long with a nice sharp blade so it'll do a much better job and cut down on disease problems as well. What we have here is a spindle aerator or drum aerator sometimes it's known as 
And uh, this one will pull plugs uh, easily from the, from the turf. It's an easy one for the homeowner to go ahead and manage because it's on, a, on an axle and as we go forward these, these tines will spin around and uh, pull out plugs of soil. And uh, that's uh, uh, very easily operated, something you can probably rent from an a, a, a equipment rental place and uh, a lot easier to handle for the homeowner to handle than the reciprocating ones, which are a little bit bigger, beefier, and should probably be handled only by uh, lawn care professionals. This is our soil here, and this is thatch from here to here. That's about an inch of thatch a little bit more than we would like to have on a lawn. And so the core aeration and the follow-up of the power raking will help to reduce the thatch down to about a half an inch. It's like body fat, a little bit is good, too much is not good. We don't want to core aerate when it's too wet or we're going to have a sloppy mess and actually destroy the structure of the soil or too dry because the, the uh, uh, pluggers will actually just walk across the top of the soil and not be very effective at all. Keep in mind that core aeration is a drying effect as well as an aerating effect. Um, what will happen with these holes now is that the root system from the adjoining plants will go ahead and grow into those open holes and uh, make a nice um, good healthy turf. It will help to revitalize the turf for us. So now next what we're going to do is we're going to take and run the power rake over here and see how well they would break up. Generally speaking when the soil is wet like this and it's a heavy clay soil it will be more effective if you can let this dry for a day and then come back either later in the afternoon or the next day, the next morning, with a power rake and break these up and they'll pulverize a lot easier than if they are wet uh, like this, especially in heavy clay. What we're going to do next is go over the cores that we pulled out here previously with this, this uh, power rake. And there are several different models of power rakes on the, on the market. Uh, this particular one happens to have a single axle where the impellers spin around at a very, very high speed and pulverize the, uh, uh, the, uh, the uh, plugs also pull up some of the, the thatch that's down there as well. And so it'll create a lot of work for you as, uh, as that goes on. Uh, this moves along at a pretty good pace. So if you're not up in good physical shape, uh, you might want to let somebody younger go ahead and do it. But you're going to have to be holding this back as you operate this thing. And uh, you're going to be walking into your own, uh, own duff, so to speak. And it's a good idea to wear safety shoes uh, with this. Uh, I have steel-toed boots on uh, to protect myself. Certainly don't go out and do this in shorts and uh, sandals. It's not a good idea to do that. Uh, very, very poor uh, consideration for your own safety. But it does the job very quickly, and then uh, the cleanup afterwards takes a lot more time. After we're done with the power raking, we have a lot of, of grass litter, old grass litter, dead grass from the previous year, and we don't want to leave it laying on the grass, on the, on the, on the surface of the lawn. So if we can get down there with a broom rake, uh, leaf rake, uh, or you can try your mower with a bagger, but that's a lot of work, simply get down there and pick this up, get it out of here with a, with a rake, and you'll see here that we have mostly nice green grass waiting there that's going to take off very quickly for us and, and do a good job. Most of the plugs will be destroyed and what you see left here now are the, the little pieces of, of thatch that were on the top of the plugs right there. This is all essentially organic matter which will disintegrate, uh, break down. We can pick it up easily with our leaf rake or in uh, subsequent mowings so it's no big problem. The other little side benefit with a power rake is that it hits the uneven spots in your lawn and it has a tendency to level those out a little bit. So if you have trouble with worm castings, uh, making your lawn very uncomfortable to walk across, uh, you can go ahead and just use a power rake and that'll, that'll knock those castings down and even out your lawn a little bit. So you can see we've got some good grass here ready to go ahead and get started and take off with the nice warm weather that we're getting and uh, in no time at all we'll have a beautiful thick lush lawn. Mm -hmm.